One temptation when you just start with your orchid care is to transfer everything to semi-hydroponics and think, I don't have to worry about watering. So I just do semi-hydroponics, put them in LECA, do a self-watering pot, and then I'm home free. So in this video, I'm going to be, I'm going to lay the cards on the table, the pros and the cons of semi-hydroponics. There are two types of semi-hydroponics. One is the level where the water only goes up so high and you change it every few days. This semi-hydroponics is a self-watering pot where you're going to put water in and change it out weekly, but it's going to have LECA pebbles in there too. Just to summarize it up front, these are the pros of semi-hydroponics. Less repotting, better view of the roots, less stem and root rot compared to other potting medias, less pH variances, easier to treat for a pest and insects, and sixth, the last, is less financial strain over a longer period of time. Now the cons. A higher initial cost. It's kind of hard for large plants and it's harder to provide a good quality water. So let's look at those one by one. So the first pro of actually using a semi-hydroponic in a self-watering pot is that it's going to be less strain on repotting because you have to repot less. The number one reason for repotting is because that material degrades. If you have a material that's not going to degrade, you don't have to repot. You just have to provide a bigger pot. You know, that also happens. The second one is a better view of the roots. Now this pot of course is not going to provide that because I can't see the roots in here so it all depends on your watering setup but there are some self-watering pots that are transparent and you can actually see the roots and that is excellent when you're just starting out because you really need to know the root condition if your roots are extremely poor no matter what system you set up, it's going to be hard to get those roots healthy. The next pro about this whole method is that there is less root and stem rot. Now this is compared to being in orchid bark, sphagnum moss, perlite charcoal. So if you overwater, that water is going to become saturated inside the pot. It's not going to have anywhere to leave. It just sits there until it evaporates and that causes strain on the roots. Now in a self-watering LECA, what's going to happen is whenever that media gets dry, it's going to wick up in that water because the, remember through osmosis, it's going to go to a higher concentration to a lesser concentration through the LECA pebbles. And then the LECA pebbles are going to help with that wicking. They're going to move that water as so very so slightly, but they do. They wick that water up to each adjacent pebble. The next reason is less pH variance inside the pot. So what happens is that when you have orchid bark, sphagnum moss, perlite, charcoal, and other kinds of materials in there, each one of those is going to have a certain pH. Of course, they're different materials. So the more materials you have in there, the more elements you have, the more variance of pH you have. And each one breaks down and decomposes at a different rate. So that's also going to influence the rate that it breaks down. The next reason is it's easier to treat pests and insects. Now, why do I say that? Because some insects love to get down and bury inside that orchid bark they're just protected. They get fresh water. They get light. They get nutrients. They get, you know, fertilized water. They get, I mean, it's a five-star hotel for these little creatures. Sometimes it's really hard. You can see your orchid is starting to decline, but what's causing this? And if you don't repot and just pull it out of the pot and check those roots and say, hey, what's wrong with this charcoal? What's wrong with this orchid bark? Well, you know, this should not look like this. It's really hard sometimes to actually identify what little pest and insect and creature is living inside your orchid pot. With the semi-hydroponics in LECA pebbles, it's easier to actually find these creatures because they're not going to bury down that much inside the pot because the LECA pebbles don't offer them all the luxuries they need for a extravagant lifestyle. The LECA pebbles actually don't offer that much. 
and less financial strain over time because remember Lekka pebbles do not degrade so you can reuse them orchid bark you can't reuse sphagnum moss much less do not ever reuse sphagnum moss Lekka pebbles you can take out of one pot boil these little babies until you think they cannot be boiled anymore and reuse them again in a different pot so your initial cost will be higher that's cons and i'm getting into those in a little bit but the overall outcome is going to be excellent you can reuse these from pot to pot after you boil them now to the cons of actually working with this setup first is the initial cost these like a pebbles are not cheap so the financial strain is going to be initially higher the next con about this setup is that these little plastic pots do not offer any resistance so if midnight comes in and just touches this it's going to fall over these are very flimsy so the risk of toppling over is kind of high so you want to actually prop these up with something like i like to use candles little short fat candles and just i don't light them of course but just to prop up around the pot so if midnight my cat comes up and hits them they're safe the next thing is that water quality Lekka pebbles do have the tendency to absorb a lot of nutrients a lot and that you'll see that salt buildup which is like a white crystal powder kind of like sugar flour on top of it or salt Lekka pebbles still will absorb all that salt so you'll need to fertilize a little bit less and you'll need to be leaching your pot a lot more do not use a tap water that is extremely high in ph if you test your tap water and see where it's going with that i am working on this tracker and planner so that you can write down this method this potting media when i mixed it with this or when i mix in my hydroponics these are the results and you can write it down in a journal this is still not done i mean it says not for resale because i'm still working on it it should be done in the next month or so i will be telling you but i'm i just wanted to give you a behind the scenes of what i'm doing now and right now i'm actually working on a spreadsheet because there's so much you can write in a book so you can write them in here but then you can also have a computerized version to keep all the updates and of course in here you can keep track of 30 orchids test semi hydroponics out test it is a great method for beginners it's a great method to actually get into orchid care where you can see the different types of how to grow it if you want to know a different idea of semi hydroponics you can watch this video up here where i explain what is full semi full hydroponics and semi hydroponics and remember this definition does not include leca and if you want an overview of what you should be looking for in a potting media look at this video down here thank you so much for watching and i wish you the best in orchid care i hope to see you in the comments below